What's up guys? I'm coming to you very casually today for a kitchen tour video. I'm really excited to share my kitchen with you because I honestly love kitchen tour videos, especially those from people who are trying to live more minimally or more intentionally without a lot of plastic because it's just fun to sort of peek into people's lives and see what they do to be more sustainable, right? So I'll start over here. Actually, I'll start with this countertop first. I have my green onions that I'm regrowing in water. I've actually just cut them because they were so tall. Can you see where my hand is? They were like up here. So I have a bunch from cut in my fridge and I have some lettuce that I'm trying to regrow too. As you can see, it's growing a little bit, but I don't know how long that's going to end up taking or if, it'll, or if it'll end up being worth it. I really like to use mason jars because I like that they have different uses. You can drink out of them and then you can also store food in them. If you look up here, I'll get to this bottom part in a second, but those jars up there, or those glasses, excuse me, were the glasses that I got when we first got married. They're from the flea market. I thought they were kind of funny because they said 19th hole on them, and I think that means like the bar because they're bar glasses. Um, but anyway, they are sort of delicate and they need to be hand washed and that takes a long time And so I've put them up there because we haven't really been reaching for them recently Because they are so much more delicate than just mason jars to drink out of so if I don't end up Using them in the next couple weeks. I'm probably gonna sell them or donate them just because they're not serving us right now so anyway, back to this cabinet. On the bottom shelf, I like to keep jars. We usually drink out of these. And then over here, I also have these little dessert cups. These might seem like frivolous and maybe not that necessary, but let me tell you, <laughs> I use these so often. I like to make chia seed pudding and sometimes I'll eat that out of here or like um, oatmeal or something like that. And then obviously like ice cream and stuff too. It's just sort of fun to have something other than a mason jar to drink out of or eat out of. And then here you can see I have my tumbler that I use. One of them is in the dishwasher right, or no, one of them's right here. I'm drinking out of one right here too. Um, you guys have seen this and heard me talk about it before. And then we have a little Yosemite cup right here. And then on the second shelf, we have mugs. And then on this side of the shelf is where I usually keep my jars that we've cleaned out to reuse. So like pickle jars or peanut butter jars, things like that. I'm actually using most of my jars in the pantry and in the fridge, so that's why this is so empty right here. This actually was my most recent thrifted jar find. My sister actually found this for me, and she said that when she saw this at Goodwill, there were a bunch of them, and you, she could tell that someone had tried to make candles out of them because one of them or a couple of them had like wax in them, and then there were a bunch of them that were just never used, and the person just gave up and donated them all. So I was really excited to get this, and I'm glad that Taylor got it for me because I've never had wet jars. They're sort of expensive, but I love that the lid's glass, and then there's like little metal clamps that keep it closed. And up at the very top, I just have some different mementos that I like to keep around. I like to keep them up there because I can see them daily and they make me happy, but they're sort of like tucked away a little bit. And then on this side of the shelf, also in this drawer, I keep all my spices. I really like this brand called Frontier Co-op because their spices are in glass and they have metal lids. And then I love this little divider. Again, I've had it forever. It's bamboo, I think, and it's just nice to sort of keep my spices on one side so that I can organize my other kitchen tools on the other side. And I'm really vigilant about only keeping the stuff that I actually use either daily or weekly in the kitchen. I don't hold on to stuff just because I feel like I have to. It's just not necessary, and honestly, I just don't have room for that kind of clutter in this apartment. So it's kind of nice that I live in such a small space. In this second drawer, I have sort of a plethora of different things. As you can see, I do have some plastic packaging that I'm working through and then I, you know, like won't buy again. Like these little watermelon seeds. I think I got these from the Natural Product Expo. I do buy some tea bags. So conventional tea bags are not great because they do have plastic. Like to close the tea bag, they use plastic polymers, which is sort of gross and weird. But I really love traditional medicinals because they don't use any plastic. All their packaging is compostable, including their tea bags. I think there's just one little staple that you have to remove, but then you can obviously recycle that. And I love these because, I don't know if you guys can tell, my throat's a little off today, and this is my go-to tea for soothing my sore throat. So this has a ton of different helpful herbs in it, and if I were to try to buy all those bulk 
plastic free, it probably wouldn't be possible for me. I don't have any stores like that around me. So anyway, purchasing this tea is just a really simple and convenient way to soothe my throat and get those herbs without any sort of plastic packaging. In here, I also have some other bulk teas. I have some coconut butter that's great for like raw desserts, some coconut oil. This is decanted from a bigger container and Again, like I have this plastic lid that I bought years and years and years ago that I wouldn't buy again, but I have it, so I use it. And I like to put my coconut oil in this little koozie or cozy. I don't know how you pronounce that. It's like getting all over my hand now. Because when it does get all over the place, it will go into the koozie instead of into the drawer. So that's sort of nice. I have my reef fleece for my little metal to-go cup. I have some candles that are plastic free that I reuse. And then in this little container, I have a ton of plastic, but it's an example of plastic that I can't really get around, unfortunately. So these are all supplements that were prescribed to me from my holistic doctor to help my thyroid, my immune system and stuff. There's B12, obviously, which I could get in a dropper. So I think I will search something like that out for the next time that I buy B12, but the other stuff, unfortunately, I do have to take in pill form. So I'll just have to recycle those containers when I'm done with them. And then in the very bottom drawer, I have my glass mixing bowls. I have my prized collection of vintage Pyrex that I just love. Actually, most of them are in the fridge right now, which I'll show you guys actually in a separate video. And then I have some to-go containers, my stash of stasher bags, and my little utensil folds from Non-Disposable Life. We actually don't use the microwave, but I use it to store cookware. <laughs> so this is um, some stuff that I store in here. And again, it's fine because we honestly, I don't think we've used this thing once. And then down here, I have the two other pieces of cookware that I use. This is an enamel pot. It says 2.9 liters, which is like a smaller size. For the most part, this is fine because it's just the two of us. And then I also have my cast iron back here. I used to be so annoyed with cast iron when I first got it. I didn't know how to use it correctly and I would wash it with soap, so I would wash away the seasoning every time that I used it. But now I don't think I'll ever go back to cooking with like conventional cookware. I absolutely love my cast iron. I'll probably just end up buying a bigger one for the future. Okay, let's see. And then inside my oven, I also keep like my cookie sheets and stuff because that's the only place that they'll fit in this kitchen. And then up here is the pantry or most of it. There's some stuff underneath this cabinet, but I'll show you that in a second. So. As you can see, there is some plastic stuff in here. I'm not perfect. I do still purchase some plastic items, but I try to be really strategic about that and I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, so yeah, let's start at the top here. I have my spiralizer. So I have a really restrictive diet, unfortunately. I can't eat many grains at all. So I like the spiralizer because I can make my own veggie pasta and I can make I can sort of like tweak meals to make them feel like comfort food, but they're veggie based instead of grain based. I have some bulk beans in the back and then my salt and pepper. I have that little container. It's actually protein powder. I do have a big container of coconut oil. When I buy plastic, I prefer to buy big so that I'm not buying a ton of tiny plastic containers that may or may not get recycled. So I decant that huge container into the smaller one that I shared in here and it's lasted me for months. I honestly can't even remember when I bought it. I really like to reuse containers that I already have. So many of these are either pickle jars or sauerkraut jars. That one's applesauce, you know, drink containers and stuff. And then some of them are newer, not many of them. I really love these sort of swing top jars. I really love these and you'll see that I have quite a few of these around my kitchen. The cool thing about those is that I've actually been able to thrift most of them. Another thing that I wanted to mention about my bulk purchases is that yes, most of them are from the traditional bulk section of my grocery store, but because I have a gluten sensitivity that affects my thyroid, I'm not able to purchase everything from the bulk section of my grocery store. So a couple years ago, a year, I guess, I don't know if it was a year or two ago, I made a video about how I shop at my grocery store using my glass jars. And I need to make a new zero waste shopping video because 
I made that video before I found out that I had gluten sensitivity, so I could shop anywhere and it didn't matter. But now that I know that I have this, I have to be really careful about how I shop in bulk. Um, because I don't want to get any cross-contamination. So the thing that I sort of do now is I always shop primarily at my same natural grocery store and I feel safe with the containers that are like usually on the top row that are like the pull-down ones because I know that my grocery store always puts the same product in each bulk container. So I feel like those containers are a safer option for me because I don't have to worry about people putting the scoops in the wrong container or the flour blowing into another container or anything like that. But I don't shop in the larger containers on the bottom anymore. I could ramble on about this, but I need to make a separate video about it and I will soon. But for now, I'll sort of go through what I have and I'll tell you what I got in bulk and what I didn't get in bulk. So first off, I have popcorn I bought in bulk. I have lentils, gluten-free oats back there. Those weren't from my bulk section because my grocery store doesn't offer those. Cashews, cacao powder. That actually wasn't bought in bulk either, but it was in a paper container. I have pumpkin seeds from the bulk section. I have beans from the bulk section. This is actually Nick's from the bulk section. It's a granola that he really likes. The coconut was from bulk. The chia seeds are another example of something that I didn't buy in bulk because in my grocery store they're in the larger bulk containers like right by the flour and it, it just really makes me nervous. So I got a big container of those. Bulk almonds, quinoa. I have some rice back there. Nutritional yeast, which is always something that I have to have in my pantry. Cacao nibs, coffee, and some golden milk turmeric mix up there. It's been almost a year since I've had real coffee, but I do like to keep decaf in here because sometimes I just like, you know, getting the taste of it. So anyway, that's everything I have in here. Let's move on because I feel like this video is going to be so long. Um, in here, just pretty boring, I have my plates. I like these little plates to put over cups when I'm making tea to sort of steep the tea. And then bowls. These are our larger plates. Those are actually our dinner size plates. As you can see, they're too big to even fit in the cabinet, but I keep some of them out because I use them to cover dishes that are in the fridge. Or if we have people over, it's nice sometimes to have a bigger plate to put different things on. Some colanders, measuring cup, and some more decorative stuff that I keep up there. Over here, I have sort of an explosion of farmer's market fruit. I need to cut this stuff up soon. So this is passion fruit. I normally don't buy this from the farmer's market because it's a little bit more expensive, but I've never had passion fruit before. I've had like passion fruit tea, but I was just really curious to try this, so I bought it. And then back here, I have this really cute mug, again, that I got a while ago thrifting. I just love it, and it's a perfect size to fit some of the little kitchen tools that I use all the time. Up next, I have this drawer that was honestly so messy that I cleaned it out before this video, but I took a picture for transparency just so you can see how horrible it was before. This is where I keep all the lids for our jars and bottles. And then underneath there, I have a ton of reusable water bottles, probably more than the normal person would need. But I like to have a few extra because sometimes if we're going out, I like to bring like a smoothie in one bottle and water in another one. Then behind there, I have my crock pot. So I used to use my crock pot all the time. But recently I've been sort of interested in purchasing a pressure cooker. I've heard that you can cook beans in like five minutes in a pressure cooker and I'm very intrigued, but I don't wanna keep both of them. So if I do end up getting a pressure cooker, I'll donate my crock pot. Let me know what you guys think. Do you have one or the other? Do you use one more than the other? And then on the top shelf, I have a really pretty vintage Pyrex sort of like serving dish for when we have people over. I have a mandolin and then I have some trivets, I think they're called, that were my grandma's. And then I also keep our potatoes, garlic, onions, things like that in here. It can end up getting sort of smelly because of the garlic. So what I do to combat that is I put a little bit of baking soda in this jar with a couple drops of lemon essential oil and it sort of keeps everything neutralized. So I also have this container of parchment paper. I don't use this often at all, but it's nice to keep around for if I'm you know, baking or whatever. I like this brand because it's compostable, it's not bleached, and I can even like compost this whole package. Okay, so I think that's everything on this side of the kitchen. I'm going to do a separate video for my fridge and freezer, and I'm also gonna share some things that I always keep in my fridge. 
Um, I'm going to have that be my Thursday video because if I include it in this one, this video is going to be like hours long and I can't do that. So anyway, Thursday video, make sure you're subscribed for that. So in this drawer that's right on the left side of my sink, I keep all of our utensils. And then in the bottom shelf, I have a couple different things. So in the front, as you can see, I have this little container with my clean dish towels. I also have some packaged food in here. So when I travel, I like to take this oatmeal with me, again, because I have to get gluten-free oats. Sometimes I need to buy packaged food. But I like this brand because I can compost the little baggies and I can even compost this whole package because it's not like the plasticky sort of stuff. Um, so when I travel, I'll bring this and I'll bring like chia seeds or hemp seeds to make sure I can get enough like carbs and fat in the morning or like healthy fats like omegas, all that stuff. And then I also have this. I haven't tried this yet. We bought this sort of on a whim when some of our family was over earlier in the month and we didn't end up using it. So it's a gluten-free pizza dough with almond flour. I'm pretty sure that there's like a little plastic bag in here. And then I have coconut aminos. So these are from Trader Joe's. I don't shop at Trader Joe's all the time, but when I go, there are certain things that I like to stock up on. And this is one of them because this is so much cheaper than the brand that I can get from my regular grocery store. And all that's in here is organic coconut sap, water, and sea salt. So it's sort of like a sweeter soy sauce alternative. And then behind that basket, I have our juicer. I also have a little lunchbox container. And then on the shelf above that, I keep our lids because sometimes when that bottom drawer gets really full, the lids like get stuck and it's super annoying. So I just keep them in this cabinet over here. And then I also keep some of my canned food in here. So I prefer cans over plastic any day of the week. And a couple of things that I always like to keep stocked in here are coconut milk. I really like making veggie coconut curry. I also like coconut in my chia seed pudding or in my smoothies in the morning. And then I have some beans in here that I honestly just bought like sort of as a just in case thing. I also have organic canned tomatoes for when I'm making soups or sauces. And then I have an extra spaghetti sauce and some Kalamata olives. On the floor over here, you'll also find the little bucket that I use to keep all of my dirty dish towels in. Over here, I keep my Vitamix. I keep it on the counter because honestly, the container is too big to fit in any of my drawers or cabinets and I use it daily, so that's fine. And then over here at my sink, I have my compostable brush. I have my little metal sort of like chain mail thing that I use to clean my um, cast iron pan with. And honestly, I do not know how I cleaned that thing before I bought that. It's an absolute life saver. I was going to say life changer, but it is sort of a life changer and a lifesaver. So anyway, I love that thing. Okay, so under my sink, I sort of have a lot of stuff, but I use it all, so I feel like it's fine. As you can see here, I have this little jar. I don't keep all my trash in that jar. We actually don't even have a trash can in our house. If we have trash like cans or bottles or whatever, we'll just clean them out and then take them right out to our garbage can outside. And then if I am saving stuff to maybe take to the recycling center that's here locally, I'll just put it in a reusable bag. This little jar is reserved for thin plastic packaging because I have to take that to a separate place. It's a grocery store that accepts that, so I just keep it under there because it's sort of easy. Next to it, I have my little shaker container of baking soda. I use this to clean all over. And then behind that, I have some empty spray bottles and some bottle cleaners and funnels and different things like that. I have my huge container of soap that actually used to be a apple juice container. And then next to that, I have my dishwasher soap. So I used to just buy like the powder dishwasher soap that came in a compostable or recyclable little um, package. But unfortunately, my dishwasher doesn't really like that kind of soap. It never really fully dissolved and that really bugged me. It only really dissolved on the really heavy hot setting and I don't like to run that all the time or really ever. And then I have this little spinny guy here that I've had forever and I just sort of organize some of my smaller bottles on there. I have my avocado oil, my apple cider vinegar. I have some fractionated coconut oil that I use for DIY projects and some witch hazel that again I use for DIY projects. I have this grapefruit seed extract that I like to use to clean my veggies with. Um, I, you could also use like white vinegar and essential oils to clean your veggies, but I can't like take, I can't ingest white vinegar, so I prefer to not use it to clean my veggies either. But this stuff works really well too. And then I also have some Epsom salt in there and then 
in the little container that says tea, it's actually citric acid, but I have a note on there and no one thinks it's tea, so it's fine. And then I have two sort of larger plastic containers under here too. One of them is distilled white vinegar and I use that to clean all over my home. And the other one is witch hazel. And you may be thinking, who the heck needs that much witch hazel? Well, I do, sort of. I use it in different DIY recipes um, for the classes I teach, so I thought it would be better for me to just buy one big container of it than a bunch of smaller ones. So that's what I do, that's what I've done. And then in the very back you'll see I have some stacked bowls. Those are my mom's and I really love them but I just don't have room for them in this apartment so I have them neatly kept back there. And then I also keep some t-shirts that I need to cut up to make new rags soon. I just sort of store them in there. And then I also have the little pot that I use to boil my menstrual cup. <laughs> TMI maybe, I don't know. So that's everything that's under my kitchen sink. Now we're really on the home stretch here. I have these two things. These are my cleaning bottles. I don't label them because honestly, I just go like this. And if I see bubbles, I know it's the soap mixture. And if I don't see bubbles, I know it's the vinegar mixture. So those are out because I cleaned the kitchen before I made this video. This is another thrifted jar that I love. I keep my cleaning rags in here. They just look like this. This is a newer thrifted jar. And in this one, I have my produce bags. So four years ago, three or four years ago, I bought a lot of these type of produce bags. That they're like made out of synthetic stuff. And unfortunately, many of them are starting to come apart now. Um, so I've replaced many of them. This is the one from Non-Disposable Life you guys have seen. Um, I've replaced many of the little produce bags with this style. These are organic cotton from Simple Ecology. I really like these. I know these are going to last me a long time. I still have these larger ones that I've had forever to buy bigger things like kale or lettuce or whatever. I have my tea that I'm drinking. And then I have my water heater. Again, this is kept on the counter because there's just no room for it anywhere else. Um, I got this as a wedding present and I really like it. I don't know if you guys can tell here though, something happened to it and it's like sort of coming apart. I didn't drop it or anything. And sometimes it doesn't turn on right away when I plug it in, which is kind of annoying. I um, reached out to the company to see if there's anything they could do, if they could fix it or whatever. And they said, no, there's nothing they could do. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to get rid of that in the near future when it stops working. But what can you do? All you can do is look forward and make better purchasing choices in the future, right? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy a kettle that I can heat up on the stove and one that's just all stainless steel so I don't have to worry about any parts that I would need to fix or anything like that. So like I said, my next video is going to be the tour of my fridge and my freezer and I'm also going to share the five things that I always keep in my fridge no matter what. So make sure you're subscribed so you can catch that one when it comes out. But other than that, thank you so much for watching and for liking this video if you liked it and thank you to those of you who are supporting me on Patreon and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!